there's a verse that you've heard since you were a kid, and it's one that it's a memory verse that circulates in many places, where Jesus in Matthew five verse thirteen says, "You are the salt of the earth. If if the salt has lost its savor, wherein will it be salted? It's going to be cast out and trodden underfoot." And we hear that verse, you know, and we actually say amen, but do we really know what Jesus meant when he said you are the salt of the earth? If this was chemistry class, you are sodium chloride. That is a, a catalyst that provokes change. If the sodium chloride has lost its its potency, wherein will it be become reconstituted? It's thrown out of the laboratory. You don't need it anymore. You see, sodium chloride, salt, is something that provokes things. My mother was a chef. She cooked, and, and she was incredible in the kitchen. And in every Mexican home, the day comes when you cook your first pot of beans. And I, I was no different. And pinto beans is what's happening in Mexican homes. And you have to pull out the rocks because they look exactly like the pinto bean. And humans aren't made to bite into a rock. It, uh, some have tried with disastrous results. And so you pull the rocks, and you put them in water, and then you let them simmer to a soft boil over a two-hour period. And that makes perfect pinto beans. When I made my first beans, they tasted terrible. They tasted like sand. And my mother said, well, son, it's because you forgot the salt. You have it right. And it was a pinch of salt. It wasn't a quarter teaspoon. And it wasn't anything you can measure. Just a pinch that you throw into the water with the beans before it comes to a simmer. Because that little bit of salt awakens the flavor of the bean. It releases the bean's flavor. Now notice with what emotion a Mexican can say this, because that makes for delicious beans, all right? You know what I'm talking about. Some of you have eaten there and know what I mean. You see, the power of a delicious bean is that salt releases its flavor. That way you don't have to add salt to the beans once it's served on your plate. This little tiny pinch of salt did it. It awakens flavor. Have you ever eaten popcorn? You, you, you go crazy. You eat it and eat it and eat it. Even if you had a big dinner, you can eat five bowls of popcorn because those little styrofoam things are exciting, especially if they're buttered. But after that, you need to drink a lot. Why? Because salt awakens thirst. And you now need water for hydration. So you see, salt awakens the flavor of the bean as you and I in our lives, as we are salted by the gospel and the love of salvation of Jesus, we become salty and awaken the flavor of the gospel for other people. And as you are a salty Christian to others, you awaken a thirst for righteousness in other people's lives who don't even think about God or religion or the need for spiritual pursuit. Now you become the provocation, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That becomes salty. Then there's another use for salt. It's winter time in many places around the planet every day. It might be spring at your place or summer and autumn, or fall, but it's always winter somewhere. And winter means cold. Winter means ice and snow in many places. And all of us who live in places where it snows know that once the place freezes over, what's the only way to clear that ice? You throw a handful of salt and it melts the coldest ice. At your church, the place may be freezing cold with problems, but you can be that pinch of salt that melts the coldest ice at church. You see, salt becomes a provocation. It becomes something that, that unleashes change and, and, and is something that in the hands of God can be delicious for the people. There was a woman being interviewed on radio, national radio in the United States, and, sh and she had won the national award for the sweetest chocolate chunk cookie. I emphasize chocolate chunk cookie. How could she have the sweetest chocolate chunk when everybody's cookies were sweet? And they asked her, what was the secret of the sweetness of your chocolate? And she says, right here on national radio, well, aren't you going to publish a book? Well, yeah, I guess my recipe will be public anyway. All right. Well, she says, when I melt this bitter chocolate, I throw in a pinch of, you guessed it, salt. And it holds back the bitterness and accentuates the sweetness. You see, a pinch of the salt of Christ in your life holds back the bitterness and can accentuate the sweetness of your person. Be salt. Be the saltiness that preserves others. Be the saltiness that awakens flavor. Be the saltiness that melts ice. Be the saltiness that awakens the flavor of the gospel for others. Provoke a thirst for righteousness. Be the salt of the earth. If the salt has lost its savor, it won't be needed. God bless you. Now go be salty.